Welcome in to our very first episode of our new podcast, Beyond the Atlas. I'm Ice Cold Snake. We're joined by Talkative Try. Hello. Swingy. Hey there. And All Trades Jack. Hi. Waving my hand and as well. <laughs> waving your hand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so the four of us, we were all brought together by Path of Exile. And that's why we all sort of wanted to start this podcast where we can talk about everything that's going on with Path of Exile, as well as all other ARPGs or any other games that are out there that we're playing at the time and that we want to talk about that maybe don't fit on our channels. Um, the name of the podcast actually comes from the Atlas Passive Tree. And you notice in the logo that we do have the, um, the Exarch, the Eater, and the Maven in the Beyond. So you got it. Uh, really excited nice. to have that in the design there. So um, with that, we are going to just do a quick intro of everyone to make sure that if you don't know who all four of the people are here, we can have a chance for you to understand what our channel vibe is all about, what kind of things we like to do, what we define as the purpose of our channel. And hopefully you'll go out and you'll check out everyone's channels. And if you're not subscribed to all four of us, subscribe to all four of us. And as we go through this, it's a long podcast. So you're welcome to just hit comment down below, send in your comments. Then if you have another one you want to send like 10 or 20 minutes later, you can do that. You can put in multiple <laughs> comments. That's we true. can have a discussion about all of this. So um, let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to just turn it over right now first to Schwingy. Sure. All right. Hey, guys. So I'm Schwingy. I've been making Path of Exile videos for about two Two years now, I think, is like when the first one I did. Um, mostly, I've been doing build guides and just beginner-friendly guides. Uh, I've tried to make videos that are helpful and entertaining at the same time. And uh, that's really been my focus. I spend a lot of time on my edits. I don't upload frequently, but I, uh, <laughs> I try. That's pretty much it. Try, you want to go ahead? Yeah, totally. So I'm talking to Try. I started making videos about a year ago for Path of Exile. And I usually focus on making video essays uh, about the game and its development, focusing on the developers, looking at the past and history of PoE and what's upcoming. Recently, I've been focusing quite a bit on PoE 2 because that's a niche that not a lot of people are talking about, even though there's a ton of excitement around it. So if you're interested in that type of content, go ahead, check out my channel. I upload pretty frequently and I just all go in on the edits in you know, a span of two to five hours. So I don't take a long time to do the edits and they're not as crazy as Schwingies or uh, <laughs> Ice Cold Snakes, but they're okay. And throwing it over to you, ATJ. All right. Um, my name is All Trades Jack. I have made a lot of reviews and a lot of ARPG content for both Last Epoch and Path of Exile for about two years now as well. I'm pretty still fairly new to the space, so I consider myself a casual and my editing is as sporadic as they come. And I feel bad for all my subscribers that they have no schedule to keep to. So thank you everybody for watching me. <laughs> yeah, and I'm Ice Cold Snake. I am very new to YouTube, just started back in August. I make lots of different things while I'm still trying to figure out what I like, but the latest video that I've published has been on Path of Exile and what the news and the features are that are coming to Path of Exile 2, and it's just very meme-heavy content. <laughs> I like making jokes. I don't see any point in doing any of this if I'm not having fun. So if you vibe with that, that's the kind of stuff I'm making. There's no schedule. It's just fun whenever there can be fun to be made. So uh, Jack, you mentioned that you uh, are a bit of a, more of a casual player, or at least a casual in this space. Um, so you and Schwingy have a Discord that you guys started together called the Community of Casuals. How did you guys like get to know each other? And then how did you guys form up this Community of Casuals? Uh, yes, sir. So, funny enough, the Community of Casuals name was actually the Committee of Casuals in my PoE videos. And it was because when I first made my the very first Path of Exile video I ever did was just going to be a, a single review, but I got it so wrong because I only played like 15 <laughs> hours of it. Uh, and Path of Exile is a 15,000 hour game. So I got so many things wrong that I kept playing to try and fix that. And it ended up becoming like a 10 video series. The community cash or committee of casuals was just supposed to be a joke where I would talk to all the other 
new players out there and just sort of reach out to them and say, I'm terrible at the game too. And it just got on. And funny enough, Schwingy was one of like, when I was still getting 20 views on my videos, he was one of the first people to actually comment on my videos. And I, it took me like four months to figure out that he was also a content creator. Also <laughs> felt really bad about that. And, and yeah, we just started talking about uh, Path of Exile and content creation since then. And that ended up becoming like the discord that we share and we named it that. Yeah. Pretty much like, uh, at some point, Jack, you approached me and said, how, how about we just like join our community since there is quite a bit of overlap we found, uh, between the viewers of both channels. And, uh, I was like, sure. I was already considering making my own discord, uh, server, but I didn't want to have to be the one in charge of everything. So <laughs> this was a great opportunity to just like jump right in and not have to worry about that stuff. And yeah, that uh, actually was the very first comment I got on my first Path of Exile video. <laughs> oh, look at you, Swingy, bringing all these people up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm scouting talent, okay? <laughs> if anybody hasn't seen All Trade Jack's series on PoE, it's eye opening and enlightening just watching you progress through the very beginning until I think you've downed every single boss except Maven, right? In the end game, it's just, yeah. it's lovely to watch. So yeah, it's, all it's a very the, chill watch too. Yeah, all the void stone the well two void stone bosses, not the Maven. Right. Um Uber out there? I haven't done any Ubers. Oh, I don't think. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I, I haven't done Shaper or Maven. I think we're the okay. two like normal mode bosses that I haven't done. Yeah. But the series that I made was eye opening for me too, because along the way it's it's very it's very easy to get burnt out in Path of Exile. The only reason I think that I kept going in Path of Exile for so long and it's pretty consistent or fairly consistently was because of the video series and people commenting and helping me out and actually enjoying what I was doing. If right. that wasn't the case, I don't think, I don't know if I would have kept playing Path of Exile. Do you I enjoy it now? I, I enjoy it more now because I can actually go in and SSF and get to Voidstone bosses and beat them. But I think there was like a middle ground where you know, there's, there's a, a lot of fun when you don't put any pressure on yourself and you first play Path of Exile and you're a new player coming in, you just enjoy it. And then you get to the point, probably right after campaign, when you're going into maps, where you feel a little bit of pressure to keep progressing and the game sort of tells you that they don't want you to progress. Mm. I'm joking. <laughs> they it's just like, it's very difficult to progress. So no map drops for you. It's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it took a little bit for me to get back into it, like following a guide and, and getting help from online content and all that. Because before then, I kind of had this this uh, personal goal that I would never look at these guides. And it just yeah. didn't, mm -hmm. ended up not happening. <laughs> That's what made your journey so special, I think, to watch. is because most people that play Path of Exile do turn to a guide pretty quickly, I would assume. Whether that's just like a build guide or just like tips and tricks, and you refuse to do any of that. You just read the comments that you would receive on your videos. And, you know, of course, there's people helping you out there. But uh, for the most part, your, your journey was, I'd say, not a typical journey for people that play Path of Exile, which is yeah. what made it so interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got told that I was doing SSF before I knew what SSF was because <laughs> uh, I would not trade, no guides. Uh, the only help I would get was in my comments, and it took me a very long time to get to where I am today, which is not not as far as a lot of people, but still, it's it's a lot more fun. I think the game is a lot more fun now because the content that I can get through is a lot easier to and more enjoyable yeah. now that I'm not frustrated yeah. as all hell. Yeah, it's been my experience so far. Now I'm trying to actually get into build guides now that I've <laughs> had one build that absolutely sucked by the time I got to the maps. So how far have I you finally gotten? found one? Uh, so I, I, would, I did start a video series that I was doing. I only uploaded the two, uh, two episodes and then I just kind of crapped out because I was getting bored of that build and I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. Like the pressure, I felt a lot of pressure around that series. So you're you're a little burnt out on PoE one, but you're hyped as hell about PoE two, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, so I finished I finished the campaign on this last build that I did, the volcanic fissure build, mm -hmm. and it just absolutely sucks. So I've kind of, <laughs> <laughs> so I've just I've burnt out. I, I already know that my issues are. I need more life, and I have all the resistances and. 
basically just my build sucks. And that's honestly, I feel great that I got through an entire SSF campaign without having any issues. Yeah. But now that I've gotten there, I'm ready to go back and follow build guide. So I found an arc inquisitor, uh, galvanic arc inquisitor build that I'm going to go, go back and do. That'll be smooth. Slams yeah, and melee should... are tough. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, great. See, yeah. I came from Diablo four where I ran through as like a Hoda barbarian. Oh, mm. easy. One shot everything. Easy. <laughs> everything. So yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to POE two. Uh, I, I think coming in as a, I'm not much of a PC gamer in my past to begin mm -hmm. with. Uh, basically the last like five or six years or so is when I really picked up PC gaming. And so coming into path of exile one, it just feels so almost floaty and like weightless as you're running through and like, I can, I can vibe with it. Like if I'm in a really good move, I just want to like listen to some music and just go like, I can get in that vibe in that zone, but there's just so there's like lack of meaning in some of the com in some of the combat. So you're not like really having to dodge many things. You're not really having to like think where you're going. You're just like looking for this one has this modifier and this one has that modifier, avoid detonate dead. I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> and so I'm looking forward to that with POE too. Cause it just, it, like I said in the last vi in the video that I posted was like, it looks like almost an isometric Elden ring from everything they've shown. And that's just going to feel great. And that's all that really matters to me is if it feels great. I'm at uh, at odds with what you say there. I do agree that eventually PoE 1 does become weightless and floaty, but it usually takes quite a bit of time to get to that, at least from my experience, you know, playing through the campaign and all the way to maps. Maybe it's the builds that I play, right? Uh, but it takes a while to get to the almost like Last Epoch. And mm -hmm. I feel like Last Epoch is very weightless and very floaty right now. And I think that's yeah. just because of how the animations are designed and everything but poe one does feel pretty meaty up until the point of godhood like where i am at with one of my characters i got 40 out of 40 in affliction it's weightless right unless you're fighting up against a boss everything is melting everything is dying and i'm sure you showcased in your poe 2 video the build where you just click and you're lightning warping from pack to pack yeah. oh, <laughs> obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 the tornado shot yeah, lightning yeah. warp build that's exactly insane. that is the peak of uh, weightlessness in poe one yeah. So with Pee-wee 2, I do think it's going to be way different. I haven't played Elden Ring or Dark Souls or anything like that. So mm. I know everybody always compares Pee-wee 2 to be uh, the isometric version of all these Dark Souls-esque games. So I'm really curious to see what it's going to actually be like. Because I think it might be along the same lines, wherein the beginning is very weighty, much weightier than Pee-wee 1, but it's still going to have that speed once you ascend to Godhood, you know, after you get super deep in the game. We'll see. I might be totally wrong on that, but let's see what happens. Speaking of last epoch. Yeah. It's coming out. In like two weeks. Yeah. Three weeks. Where are we at? Three weeks. A little under three weeks. February 21st. Two weeks and two days. Yeah. Yep. Pretty sweet. So you guys going in blind? You going in with a build guide? What's your plan? Fine. I'll go for <laughs> you're going in blind jack that's that's the whole fun of the game man if you're yeah. gonna go for a guide go for path of exile last epoch i feel like that's the probably the most satisfying way to play is just go in mess around and try not to die like yeah i i, I did you know when i first started playing again i was still against guides all the way and yeah. I had I had just like the complete opposite experience when I had when I played Last Epoch versus Path of Exile. Last Epoch was not frustrating. It was very easy to learn, and it's nothing against PoE because I always say like I don't I don't really compare the two a lot because I feel like it's a very different experience when you play Path of Exile. You you know you know that you're trying to be an intellectual. You know that you're trying to do math. And with Last Epoch, you're just having fun. You're just enjoying the the spells. You're enjoying the characters. Um, you're trying your hardest to to like get to the end game. But most of the fun for me is just comes in the class fantasy. So if mm -hmm. once the 1.0 comes out, the Warlock and the Falcon are there. The new graphics updates are there. Uh, the the trade is there. I feel like there's so much more to just learn and figure out. What's your yeah. favorite class fantasy in uh, Last Epoch right now? I think Good you played question. everything, right? Yeah, I played. I played everything. I played every mastery. Unfortunately, my favorite class fantasy is the shaman, and and right now the shaman doesn't feel as good as some yeah. of the other classes. It's it's going to get a rework. We already know that that's coming. But um, the only problem with the shaman right now is that a lot of the melee spells feel 
like you, we were saying earlier, it feels very floaty. It doesn't have a lot of impact. And because the only melee spell that does feel like it has impact is super high cost and mana, mm-hmm. uh, you can't really spam it. So you don't have a lot of... So you're kind of forced to take one of the spamming melee spells so that right. you can regenerate mana, so that you can use your other spells as more powerful hits. But uh, it just doesn't feel good. Either using Swipe and, or uh, Tempest something. Tempest Strike. Mm, okay. Tempest Strike. Both yeah. of them. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of feel weighty or kind of feel floaty. So, but the Shaman in any game is really, I did the same thing in Grim Dawn. Shaman is the perfect class fantasy for me. It's a big lightning infused two handed weapon wielder. <laughs> uh, just smash enemies with pure brute force and elemental. Love it. Power. Are we all druid lovers here? Because I, I think I'm my, I would just be the shapeshifter, right? Oh, yeah. No? I'm not a no. druid lover at all. I never have been, even since like yeah. D2. Really? I just, <laughs> yeah. I played like a werewolf shapeshifter in D2 once. I got to like level 30 and I was like, this is so boring. I am never <laughs> playing a druid again. <laughs> I, but, uh, um, I, I always have tried back. it. I have tried it in last epoch just to just to see. Um, I got to like also around level thirty, and oh, okay. I, I kind of dropped off of it. It's yeah. uh, it's just not a class fantasy that I that I gel with for some reason. For me, it's always been like the uh, like the paladin uh, mm-hmm. in D two, the uh, hammered in. That was just like that was my favorite build of all time. Yeah, and um, even in Poe, I really like uh, champions and um, especially like berserker is just like the melee in your face type of gameplay. Yeah, I like that yeah, a lot. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it's not like the easiest to get started on. So, right. But yeah, but no, in Last Epoch, you, you can actually do that, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, Sentinel has quite a few. Yeah. Like Void Knight yeah. seems ridiculously powerful. It is. That's yeah. what I played yeah. with. Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I always bounce back and forth between like a lightning sorcerer or I'll do, um, when I was playing Last Epoch last mm-hmm. year, I actually did a spear build on the Paladin. I can't remember which ascent or. Sentinel, class but like Paladin, I think Sentinel. is the class, right? Yeah, but you throw your spear every time you you do a lunge attack. It throws a spear forward, and the spear uh-huh. leaves a trail of lightning. It's pretty cool. So you constantly are throwing spears of lightning yeah. and dashing to enemies to create more spears of lightning and just wiping out the whole screen. And then That's your cool. smite just right. heals you as well. It's yeah. it's insane. That game yeah. is just so good on on the class fantasy. Very yeah. intuitive with the different builds you can make too. There's, there's many yeah. options with the branching skill trees and everything. It really is a, a middle ground bef- between PoE and Diablo. So very nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I we... love the fact that you can you can just respec like whenever you want. You oh, never yeah. really feel locked into anything. Which I know some people don't like that, but I feel like if they make it more of a currency that you can get to respec, it'd be a little bit better. But Right now, it, it, the fact that you just use gold to respect completely, and then your skills, I like that you actually get experience, like you lose experience on those skills when you change them. So you just have mm-hmm. to level them back up. So yeah. it's like, oh, hey, you, you just lost out on this, but just go play. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's going to be interesting when the trade like leagues start coming up. I wonder where gold is going to land. Because yeah. right right yeah. now, like you share gold with all of your characters, and it's really easy to find gold, and there's not a lot of gold sinks. So yeah, like I have over four million gold in my bank right now because there's really nothing to do, and I'm I don't run the lightless arbor as much as I should. So when the trade league comes out, I'm wondering where like what the value of gold's going to be because if it's just if people are hoarding millions of gold. And the market's now selling powerful items. I wonder if they're, you know, what the prices are going to be versus when you respec your your skills, like how expensive is that going to be? So how easy is it? How easy is it to purchase anything in the game once trade becomes a factor? Yeah. Do you mm. think people will actually be playing trade or just go to the circle of fortune? Because come on, that's obviously the superior path. From what I see, <laughs> well, it's power. It's it's definitely the more powerful of the two. Like, oh yeah! Mm-hmm. If you if you just take Circle of Fortune and you want to have like a little bit of patience, yeah, right. I mean, you can get anything you want basically with just a little bit of grinding. Right. I think the the trade league is going to be it's it's going to be for a very specific type of person that like it's specific right. type of player because yeah. the other thing that they sort of blocked was this was the um, the ability to sort of play the market, play the economy. Right. Because there's no reselling. On so, trade. That's crazy. Yeah, one That's trade really for cool. item. Wow. Yeah. So, 
you lost me there. I was like, ah, <laughs> yeah. no, not a fan of it, that. Bold decision. It's a, yeah, it's a good way to keep people from relying on trade, but right. it also prevents the market players to play on the market. But yeah, you can still put items on the, on the auction house. You know, play for gold and stuff like that. It's it's a lot the same in the um, like in World of Warcraft, for example. You have. Uh, Soulbound items. So yep. when you buy something off the auction house, you equip it onto yourself. It comes becomes soulbound. You cannot sell it again. And that's mm -hmm. how they take items mm -hmm. out of the market, so that it doesn't just become super inflated with items. They're trying. I, I believe that's what they're trying to do by putting this tag on in Last Epoch, yeah. so that the the auction house just doesn't become super inflated with items. Right, Snake. You looked. You had a very strong reaction to learning. There's only one trade per item. That's just bold. That's a bold decision. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to put in trade faction and then to also limit it that way. Well, there's the psychology there that uh, our Lord and Savior, Chris Wilson, laid out with Jonathan Rogers <laughs> like uh, a decade ago, wherein you might not ever trade an item, but if you could trade set item, if you have the possibility hanging over your head at all times, was it like the sword of Damocles? It's just there. Mm -hmm. It's just sitting there waiting. You're like, oh man, that's so cool. That makes me feel powerful. That gives me that status. You know, that's why a lot of us play these games, right? So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, watching Diablo 4 start and their trading system is just a hodgepodge of crap. I, it I doesn't don't agree exist. with much. It I don't really even doesn't. Know what it is. You can like trade all items, but not legendary items and not items with powers on them. So you no, can't really just, trade it, valuable items. It doesn't items. exist. Right. So <laughs> it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out like a month, two months in to see how it evolves. Is it going to be like 50-50 trade split? Are people going to be trading a lot? Just a bit? It's going to be really cool. I can't wait to see this game actually release. They've been working on it for so long. They're probably hyped as all hell. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely curious to see if if people actually engage with trade if if Circle of Fortune is just way too powerful. Right. Uh, I I don't know because obviously we haven't had a chance to play with it. There have been beta tests on it, so in the beta they said that it was half and half. If Interesting. if Circle of Fortunes just becomes the way to go, I'm I'm wondering if that actually hurts trade because there will be less items to buy. Which yeah. means that the market mm -hmm. won't be actually as, you know, fluid as mm -hmm. we would like. Uh, which means right. more people are just going to go to Circle Fortune anyway. So it's just kind of like a recurring um, or a circle of, I don't know how to say it, but <laughs> it'll it'll die. I feel like the market won't right. won't be able to take off as much as we would like it to. And with how they're starting with Circle of Fortune, it being s easy to target farm items, taking that away too will be very difficult. That would be as if you know. That's true. Path of Exile nerfed the way div cards worked. Suddenly you mm. couldn't farm up an apothecary, five apothecaries to get a mage blood or something like that. I don't know. But it's it's a risky decision they're taking here. But they've always been pretty upfront with their community from what I've been reading. I've pretty much immersed myself in everything 11th hour games the past two weeks. Mm -hmm. They're yep. great. <laughs> I, I love how they started. I love how they've just conducted themselves. And even now with creators and, and their community, they're very transparent, which is great to see. Respect that a lot. Yeah, they 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 do a lot of good for the community. They they yeah. communicate a lot, and on top of that, you can actually see them playing their game, which I think is extremely right. important. Yeah. There's this guy who is very active in the community. His name's McFluffin. I don't know if you guys have seen him around, um, but he is he's part of the Last Epoch team, and he also has a YouTube channel. And he also goes and watches a lot of the Last Epoch videos. I've only made like three or four Last Epoch videos, but he, I think he's been on every single one just commenting. And, you know, I'm, I'm a small creator. So the fact that he can find me, find these videos yeah. and comments. Um, and then there's also Mike who plays on yeah. the dev streams every, every week. single week. So it's cool to see them play, so to, to see them talk about it, to see them engage with the community like that, and, and to see them so excited about people talking about it. Yeah. Yep. It's going to be good. I wish them the best. The, I think the one thing that can really bite them here is something that's almost out of their control, but not really. It's the server issues that could mm. potentially be on uh, day one with all oh, the yeah. huge streamers that are going to play and then all their followers are going to buy the game, try to log on. I, I hope they're ready for a lot of people logging onto their game yeah, <laughs> on the yeah. 21st. It's going to be crazy. I wish them the best. 
I'm actually I'm really thankful. That's going to be uh, trouble. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I'm actually really thankful I have a work trip that week, so I don't get to play <laughs> until the weekend. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so let them, let, them, let them iron it out by the weekend. Yeah. Well, that's something. Game releases in the middle of the week. What's the, yeah. what, what is that? Come on. What that's day? a dead cycle a thing. Tuesday? A Wednesday. It's a win. Okay, that's weird. Eh, come on, Friday. Yeah. A lot of people have jobs at this point who are gaming, especially in this genre. I doubt there's a lot of kids, mm. right, who are who are playing <laughs> this. <laughs> that demographic. I wish it was a weekend release. That'd be great. But that'll be fine. So what are you guys' thoughts on, you know, deterministic rewards in ARPGs? You guys are talking about the circle of fortune and how you're looking at it. But I know there's a lot of back and forth on deterministic rewards and if they belong in ARPGs. I like oh, yeah. them. I like I the, like, chance to, like farm for a thing that I know I'm going after. I think it does devalue it a little bit compared to like, if you just got the hit the lottery and it dropped for you. But I also don't like just playing the lottery of the loot drops. I would say if, so again, coming from World of Warcraft, one of the best things about classic WoW or, you know, TBC, Wrath of the Lich King was that items had an identity and uh -huh. you knew where to go, what challenge to complete in order to get that item. And once you did that challenge, you got the reward, you felt like a badass for having mm -hmm. it. And, you know, people could see it on your character and it was just all hype, right? It was amazing. That over time kind of went away, but because that's, it's the nature of the game. There's just too many weapons now. But I would say this, in, P in Path of Exile, I don't think that they should have very deterministic rewards because I think that the gameplay that they hold on to the player base that they hold on to would freak out if they knew how to do everything i think a lot of the fun comes from trying to figure things out and like theory craft and uh go into a boss and have to do it 15 times to get the one item with the one item roll that you want yeah so yeah but last epoch on the other hand i think circle of fortune is much better because the people that are playing that game are not as hardcore i would say <laughs> you know yeah. my thoughts just briefly deterministic encounters but random rewards i love when i know i'm going to be able to fight and have an opportunity to get a certain item drop um mm -hmm. even if it's a very low probability like path of exile right now with the eater of worlds and searing exarch you just have to do a certain number of maps to encounter each of them but you know what those rewards are going to be and they're going to be random I like that style. I don't like randomly encountering bosses or certain encounters, but knowing how to reach those encounters and then trying to farm those certain rewards. So I'm a big fan of random stuff, but not deterministic stuff. So in terms yeah. of rewards. I'll chime in a little bit. I also am a fan of the like bosses having loot tables that are like um, specific to that boss. Yeah. I will say that I feel like in Trade League and Path of Exile, there's a bit of a like loss of identity because you can just trade those uh, drops that you get away and so there is no tie to like feeling like you accomplish something if you just buy it right just from having yeah. mm -hmm. uh, farmed maps until you can afford uh <laughs> you know uh like a void forge or whatever yeah uh, instead of having earned it yourself having actually fought the boss like a hundred times for that one percent drop so i am a fan of that but i could also see like why people are looking forward to last epoch where it's a lot easier or theoretically will be easier to get the uniques that you're looking for though so, i don't know I, i'm excited for both i, I can see like values in, in in both sides the fantasy of how last epoch is implementing it as well is super cool and it's original where you have the faction and then you have these constellations that you're forming to find all these mm -hmm. i just love that idea too so if you can wrap something like that into an interesting fantasy I think you're going to be able to sell it to a lot more people. Whereas if it was just implicit in the game and it was just, oh, that's just how the drop tables work. You know, right. you, you do a boss 10 times and then on the 11th time, okay, you're probably going to get one of these items. Like that's how uh, a game I used to play Dungeons and Dragons online. That's how they did it. You do like 20 mm -hmm. raids and you'd get a certain uh, reward after those 20 raids you could choose from. Or any of those 20 times before you could randomly get it in the chest, right? But yeah. it was just in the game. It wasn't outlined anywhere. So I like the way Last Epoch is outlining it. It's cool. Yeah, like the idea of when you do a raid, instead of just wait or like playing, rolling the dice with the loot tables, you actually get a currency back and then mm -hmm. you can use that currency to buy rewards. Like I said, I, I don't think Path of Exile 
would <laughs> fly with that at all. <laughs> I think just generally in the ARPG genre, I don't know if you yeah. – having the ability to just outright buy rewards is is difficult to play around with. That's why trade is such a big contentious uh, topic. But if – I think the way – like you said, right? The way The Last Epoch is doing it where it's part of the game, you have to continue to play the game in order right. to get these rewards. Like yeah. you have to go out and farm Renown. You have to farm the currency that you have to use to actually use these fortunes. Um, I think that's a, a great way to get people mm -hmm. involved in the game and keep playing the game while getting like little little rewards along the way like drip feeding yeah. <laughs> drip feeding rewards <laughs> yeah right <laughs> keeping us hooked keeping us hooked exactly so i i don't pay attention too much to all of everything that's going on with last epoch but i heard about some warlock trauma Somebody want to tell me what that was all about? Uh, yeah, well, is this the stuff that with the Warlock reveal and everything? Yeah, that little bit of drama, you know, <laughs> a little contentious uh, on Reddit. You know, Reddit people were very angry. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got those updates. <laughs> yeah, well, so basically, so with, okay, trying to be non-biased, not putting my own opinion sure. here, i just give the facts, straight okay. facts. There, there was a partnership with Icy Veins. EHG was going to release the information for the Warlock reveal on Icy Veins on the 26th, I believe. And it was just, that was all the information that we had received, that there was a partnership uh, with them and with this YouTube channel called Action RPG. That happened. There was a lot of information that was revealed to Icy Veins, um, but Icy Veins and Action RPG decided within that partnership to um, create something called the Warlock Week like reveal week. And in that week, he, the Aaron from Action RPG would release a video every day covering each part of the Warlock. And what that meant was he could deep dive into each part and do 20 minute videos on every single piece, right? So in that way, it was great. What some people had an issue with was that this, what would have been a very easily digestible information for people that didn't really need to deep dive into it was instead uh, drawn out over the course of the week. So we didn't actually know all the details until, you know, a few days later, which yeah. depending on who you are, how invested you are in this game could be a very big deal or not a big deal at all. I think that was very fair. Thanks. Excellent representation. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. great. Yeah. I, uh, uh, I think it, I think it was probably a bad move. Honestly, just, I think I agree. starting, <laughs> starting with one big video, right. With everything involved in it on either, either IC veins or action RPG. I think that would have been the best move. I think that would have pleased everybody. And then you could have followed up with the deep dives and that's optional content for those really avid viewers. Like that's how I would have approached it, but you can understand from a content creator's point of view, what they were going for there. We, we were just kind of talking about it, drip feeding. That's exactly what, <laughs> what was going on. And uh, and that does work in some cases. Uh, it didn't work in this, for me personally, it, it didn't work. I didn't watch any of those videos. I waited until somebody made a compilation video at the end of the week. Yeah. That's yeah. what yep. I was interested in, right? Uh, but I'm sure a lot of people did watch each and every one of those videos. I think there's mm -hmm. another reveal coming up too for the Falconeer. The, yep. the full reveal. I know there was a leak, but there's going to be a full reveal with everything at once, right? From Maxwell? Uh, yep. Yeah, so yeah. that's happening on the. Oh man, I'm getting my dates mixed up. I think it's the eighth. Like soon, yeah, yeah. Soon. yeah. That mm. sounds like a fun pet class, and that is that fantasy in any other game where you can oh. control birds. Huh? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, pretty cool. No, that's not pretty cool. An RPG. <laughs> no, yeah, not yeah. an RPG. Well, there is a fight in Last Epoch, and I think it might be my favorite set piece fight, uh, where you are on the back of a giant oh, eagle. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Oh, yep. uh, did not expect that at all. They should use that more. I want. Is it in the monolith system? I hope so. For a boss no. fight, be, <laughs> no, they should. No, do that. it was super yeah, cool. No. But the Falconer oh, is going to be. I think it's going to be a really cool class. I yeah. I think you know if you compare it to the Warlock, what you got revealed in that leak. I don't know if you if you looked at it. It's it's going to be a, a minion bird, right. Ballista maybe class. So um, cool. I think the the Warlock is more badass. It's more like uh -huh. in your face. Yeah. Got like really cool looking spells and everything, but we yeah. don't know what the falconer has yet. Like we just know the passives. So right, hoping for a giant bird. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think the warlock looks so cool. 
like just the, yeah. the, the spells the, the colors and the fact that um when you convert the different elements like through the skill trees it actually changes yeah. the colors of your spells too and yeah it, it, i'm gonna be playing a warlock when release comes for sure it just looks too cool hey well there's another point that i think last, last epoch has above competition for enemies they always color coat the damage that their enemies do on their attacks so if uh, a monster has a fire mod on them, they'll have little bits of fire, you know, coming off their fingertips or whatever, or abilities that have certain elements will have those actual elements in the attacks. That's something like Path of Exile does not do that. You have the little mod on the name, you know, that on you the can't name see because you're clicking you can't all over the place. I yeah. hate that. I know that there are some excellent players like uh, Ben or Lighty, he used to be called Lighty who do actually see all the mods when they hover over. <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> I think a lot of people are in the same boat. <laughs> That's Crazy. one gripe I have with POE1 as I'm going through it. It's like, mm -hmm. I just can't see like monster health. You can't see what they're, anything about it until you hover it. But I'm usually moving the mouse so fast, you just see it for a flash. Have you seen that you can pause in POE2? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. So there you go. You get mm -hmm. solved. I don't know how often I'll be pausing, honestly. Yeah. Well, can you pause oh, and go work. into your passives? Yep. You pause when you go into your passives, actually. See, I think that's great because so. one of the biggest problems I had going through the, the campaign the first time is I felt like anxious because anytime <laughs> I would stop moving in one of the maps, <laughs> like some random yep. little minion would come by and try hitting me. Yep. And exactly. I'd be in my, my menus. In Affliction League, when you're in the woods and you're just talking yeah. to the little uh, vendors, right? Mm -hmm. And you're just trying to like hover over so you can see if the items are worth buying. Yep. And oh my God, you're, you're sure there was nobody around you. <laughs> and then <laughs> you, you just start hearing like you're getting smacked. And you're like, come on, man. Have, have you lost a charm to that? I lost a five divine charm to that this league. So, I don't I probably have. I mean, oh, I, it was horrible. it's just, it happens like all the time. Yep. 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 So I'm looking forward to POE2 where you, you pause when you talk to, to Ben. Like, I don't know why NPCs in the maps yeah. don't give you the option. I mean, I know why, but like, they've been stubborn. Ultimatum had, had it back in the day. The right. tech is there. and It is there. <laughs> yep. It's going to be good. It's frustrating. It's <laughs> it is exciting. I'm very yeah. excited about that. Yep. You guys going to have your minds blown by the two passive trees running at the same time? Like... I, I can't even wrap my head around that right now. Yeah, it's going to be great. Weapon swapping. <laughs> You'll actually be able to use two different weapon sets. It's so okay, unfeasible okay. right now in PoE 2. Yeah. Unless you're doing some silly tech like uh, like what I'm doing with getting max rage by weapon swapping to, oh, a, to a shield. Yeah, yeah that's that's uh, one of the only use cases right now in PoE 1. So it'll be really cool. Because I think I've only seen weapon swapping for that and for like ward loop, I think. That's what it's called with the, yeah, it with might the white thing. That, the thing that Asmongold just basically burned Ward all our loop. eyes with yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's worth loop <laughs> so so what is this two passive skill trees Ooh, so Ooh, try yeah so jack in poe2 you can attach a passive skill tree to each of your weapon sets so you can have weapon set one and it will allocate certain passives in your passive skill tree and when you swap automatically it's going to swap to a different passive skill tree basically oh. so you can take right. a whole bunch of staff damage nodes or uh, fire damage nodes for one weapon set and then do claw damage nodes or fire damage nodes for the other damage uh, weapon set, which is super cool. And you can also attach the skill trees to skills that you're using. So say you have like fireball and that's one skill and it uses one weapon and you want to use ball lightning and that's attached to your other weapon set. Well, you can just click between the two skills and it will dynamically swap to your second, your uh, weapon sets. So Pretty cool stuff. There is a limit to how many points you can allocate that way, right? I don't think it's just like a full-on different tree. Yeah, you don't get one point per tree per level up. I think mm -hmm. it's just the books of skill. I think that's what okay. they said. So the stuff that okay. you earn through quests. So if it's like POE1, it's like 25 or 26 points or something that you can allocate between. So, cool. so you have two skill trees. You can automatically search between the two yeah and and the second one if you want to like focus on one let's say you put all the normal points in there the mm -hmm. second tree would only have 26 points no so i think there's going to be 26 we'll just call them like dynamic points so you have the 100 from your levels that you can only allocate in your primary tree 
and then 26 that can go into the weapon swap tree, essentially. Oh. I think that's how they've pitched it in uh, ExileCon 2023, although it's probably changed at this point. Um, but it's just trying to encourage that greater skill variety because in PoE 1, you really can't swap between weapons or skills. But in PoE 2, because skills are so heavily tied to weapons, they're really encouraging that second passive skill tree. I think the same is true for shapeshifting too. That counts mm -hmm. as a weapon set. Mm -hmm. So if you swap to a bear or a wolf or... Hopefully a cat or a roa. Oh, that'd be so cool. It swaps your skill tree. <laughs> Shape shift into a roa so you Dude. can go stun all the monsters in your <laughs> they, the mud flats. <laughs> they yeah. come on. They've gone above and beyond with all the other crap. They gotta do a unique to PoE shapeshifting form. They have to do it. Roas or Weta, maybe? Weta. Oh, Weta. There you go. <laughs> Something like that. I just want to be a quadrilla, one of those forearm gorillas. That'd be so cool. Yeah. So that Especially sounds pretty, pretty complicated. It sounds complicated, but I swear, Jack, it's not. Uh, there's a video <laughs> showcasing it. Yeah, yeah. It looks really intuitive once you actually it, see it. Like, okay, it's actually okay. laid out on the passive skill tree. It tells you exactly mm -hmm. what you're doing with the dual specialization. I think that's what it's called. Um, it's not like, oh, you just have to kind of learn this, right? There's an actual tutorial that's laid out on screen. Cool. Good job. All right, all right. Yeah. Are they gonna Are they going to be doing better tutorials this time around? They claim to. So. They claim to. <laughs> like uh, like the passive skill tree, apparently when you hover over nodes, it'll tell you how it affects your current skills. Okay. Oh, so will it reduce the cooldown of X skill or increase the damage of Y skill? It'll all be uh, on the node when you hover over it. That immediately is going to showcase new players. Okay, if I take this node, this is how it will impact my character versus this other node over here. It'll be really nice. So like we'll all see the, the stats that you see in like Path of Building, that sort long list of... Like, of Sort of like that, but I, I don't think they're going to go as in depth. They've been pretty okay. firm about not putting something like PUB in game yeah. mm -hmm. because they, even though a lot of people don't do this, they want people to play the game and not play the building of a character like outside of the game, which people are going <laughs> to do. The amount of people who say they spend more time in PUB than yeah. PUE is wild, but to each their own. <laughs> to each their own. Do you spend yeah. time in PUB before leagues or during leagues? Absolutely. I you don't. I do. Uh, I go in, I'll plan out what I'll, usually I'll scout a build on PoE Ninja that looks interesting to me. It's something I haven't played before, typically. And um, then I'll drag it into POB, tinker with it, remove a lot of the configuration stuff that they'll have had put in. Like it's automatic when you're doing it on PoE Ninja, anyways, right? Um, but I'll remove a bunch so I can sort of see what's more realistic uh, within a starter scenario. And then I'll work my way and maybe decide, okay, would I prefer to go in a different direction? Um, I'll often compare a lot of different POVs also, and then just make my own out of the information that I've gleaned from doing that little bit of research. And, uh, and as the league goes on, as my character is evolving, I will constantly have POV open on my second screen. And I'm just like refreshing as I get new gear. Okay, what do I do here? Oh, I can remove this passive point over here and put it over here instead. And it gets me like, you know, I say like one more, yeah. It's a it's a thing, and uh, it's a lot of fun to refine your build that way. But it takes a lot of time too. Do you calculate the DPS of against all the different monsters and boss types too, or do you just use it for building? Oh no, I, I use the DPS thing all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I respect you. I've down I downloaded POV. I tried looking at it, and I've got so lost. <laughs> it's a bit intimidating at first, for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. I ended up going on POE Planner for that Volcanic Fisher one and kind of mapping it out beforehand. It still yeah. sucks, but hey, at least I had it mapped out and I made it suck. <laughs> um, I got, I got a question ahead. for the tooltip in the game. Why Why is that? I've, I've heard that it's not accurate. Why is oh, that in, not in accurate? POE 1. Yeah. Because it doesn't factor in all of the uh, like monster mods and stuff. And it basically, like, it, like if you have a curse on an enemy, for example, that totally increases your damage. Like if you're cold, the uh, cold based spells, let's say, and you have frostbite on your enemy, they take like 29% more damage or something like that. Um, that is not going to be shown on your tooltip because uh, POE doesn't know what monster you're fighting. So it's just like a whole bunch of little things like that. And they're everywhere in your build. So, right. And you can Got flag it. all those in POB. You can yeah. say is cursed mm -hmm. is not an Uber boss or has yeah. this monster mod stuff like that. So, that level of customizability is never going to be in Path of Exile in the game itself. No way. 
it's going to be third party tools. And I don't think those are going away anytime soon. No. So the developers, I don't think they have like a problem necessarily with people making them. They're no. just not going to put them in the game themselves. Yeah, yeah I think we that makes that. sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we already saw them. We already saw them kind of act on what's happening outside in the community. And instead, oh, yeah. I, I think for POE2, they said that they're going to have instant purchases or... They will. Insane. Some sort of auction house. Sure will. I'm so happy. Crazy. <laughs> so try you. Uh, you told me that wasn't going to happen on our last talk. Yeah, that was the <laughs> one thing I was infallible on. I said, "There's no way that they're ever going to change that." They are so steadfast. Their trade manifesto is clearly outlined. They're not going to change that ever. Yeah, I was I was dead wrong on that. About uh, <laughs> two weeks later, they shifted their policies. But it was it was like a perfect storm, right? There was last yeah. epoch who came out and said, we're just going to evolve the entire trading scene in ARPGs. Take this, right? And everybody saw that. It had tons of eyes on it. Everybody in the community reacted to it, had their opinions on it, and essentially said, why isn't PUE doing something like this? And it really forced them to rethink their trade policy. And probably while they were doing that, the whole TFT fiasco happened, yeah. where there yeah, were accusations yeah. of real money trading and a monopoly on the market. And then everybody in the close-knit PUE community was talking about that for about a week. Mm -hmm. So it forced their hands essentially. And I think the new leadership at GGG, new you know, public facing leadership, Jonathan, decided, mm -hmm. okay, you know what? We're gonna rethink this. We're gonna get in the room. We're gonna talk about this. We're gonna change our policy and we're gonna present it next week to the biggest POE content creator around. And that's exactly what happened. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the buyout, instant buyout is gonna change the way POE works pretty fundamentally. Especially so, with having so like what's the Sorry, What's ahead. the change? Essentially, now, you've traded on P... Yeah, I've seen you trade on P... Yeah. No, you haven't. No, you have. Uh, yeah. Have no, you? Yeah, okay. So you go <laughs> on an online website and everything's listed mm -hmm. for a currency. You whisper someone in game and they have to invite you to their party. You go to their hideout. You make the trade, right? Now, you list now in PE 2 not in PE 1 This isn't coming to PE 1 as far as we know. Yeah, and they P said they might do it right. down the line, but they're going to do POE2 first to see how it goes, to see like if a it pilot. works out. Yeah, yeah. it's like a pilot. Yeah. You'll list an item on the auction house or whatever trading market in POE2 for a currency cost. And I believe you'll list it for a gold cost too. Yeah, I think they said gold is going to be a tax. I think the gold cost tax. is the tax. So I think that part will be automatic. Is it going to be automatic or will I would it scale? Assume. I mean, it might scale, but I, I assume that it will be how, automatic. I, I don't, we don't know the no. details, right? Yeah. Right. How know. would they, because I don't would think have they to know scale. the details. Right. They would, it right. would have to scale because you don't want, like, a, what's a big POE, like a Mage Blood being yeah. taxed the same as one Chaos Orb or something like that. Exactly. Yeah, but essentially, yeah, yeah. Jack, there's going to be ta a gold tax for the buyer and the seller. Although I think they said the, mo the bulk of the tax will be for the buyer on every trade, but the trades will mm -hmm. be instant. So you'll buy something, you'll be taxed, and it'll be shot to your stash, your character. Like, we don't know that either. Yeah. Probably stash. And, and gold, like in case you're not aware, gold is like, oh, yeah. you can't trade gold with other it's players. Account bound. So you can only get it by playing the game. Yeah. Or in the PoE shop in uh, 2025. No, I'm just kidding. Hope not. Please no. <laughs> the PoE token? Please no, not the oh, PoE no. token. Oh, God. Don't shift don't on that, man. Game. Don't shift on that, please. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, okay so it's gonna be like an auction house like a true basically, auction house yeah wow yep and i think the old way of trading will still remain in the game as far as we know oh you think i think player to player yeah i suppose for, yeah. i mean i don't know we'll see i guess for big item trades would you really so what this also does you guys and what i'm gonna get screwed on over and over i usually list items for way too low because i don't use like there's awakened POE trade that will estimate mm -hmm. the cost of an item. I'll list mm -hmm. something for like, ah, oh, yeah, I think this is like five chaos orbs. And then I'll instantly <laughs> get spammed by 500 people. <laughs> and I'll, okay, I'm going to look up the mods and POE trade. 20 divine orbs. Oh my God. So I'm going to lose a lot of items, I think, with this new system, unfortunately. Yeah, but one of you'll the be things... able to actually easily see things. I think you'd be able to research yeah. on right? the auction house beforehand. Just, okay, what do these mods so have? I'll, I'll want to do and... that. Right? Yeah. You want to pre research. And will it be in game? I would think so. I, I hope so. It, it better be. Otherwise, what's uh, the I hope point? so. Yeah. I don't know. But that's okay. actually a big a big problem, though, because like right now, if a, 
like a new player who doesn't understand what the hell mage blood is or any item that they might get, they don't know the price. So they right. have to do some sort of yeah. you know, investigation and they could easily yeah. be, you know, screwed over by the mm -hmm. buyer who knows what the heck he's doing. But that's oh, yeah. actually a big problem in auction houses too, because in World of Warcraft, oh, yeah. there are bots that will literally go and and scout the market for anybody yep. that puts something below a certain threshold that they know that they can make a profit on if they resell it. Right. So I, I'm sure, I'm sure, I don't know too much about Path of Exile 1, but I'm sure there are bots in the game. Oh yeah, so, a lot of bots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> totally yeah. real trade bots, totally real. Yeah, I'm sure that that will happen. <laughs> so, oh yeah, it's going to happen more now too. So, in their original manifesto that they released, that's one of the big things. They said if there's if trade is easy, there will be more bots in game. 100%. We do our best to try to stop all this, but if everything's super simple, people will find out how to game it and it's going to be really hard to catch it. So, even though there's the gold tax, I'm sure gold will be farmable in an easy way somehow and people will get yeah. bots to do it. So, there's probably going to be more. It's very likely but they do a really good job i hear that blizzard does a poor job with bots and like classic wow oh, from my little worst. exposure yeah so absolutely heard, terrible yeah, yeah yeah i've heard that they do a decent job and like they don't have a real money trading company or player to company like wow does have that right they have yep. real money right so hopefully mm. it stays that way i shake yeah. my head too i shake my head too yeah like, um, it, just, it doesn't belong in games just get it out of here <laughs> I know. Uh, what's your opinions on the trade system right now in Path of Exile 1? Like, the full opinion? I'm fine with it. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. You can be fine with it. I'm um, fine with it. I'm not a fan of it uh, primarily. Primarily in the sense that uh, it is frustrating having to go and buy. Uh, like, when you're trying to buy currencies in particular, um, it can be really frustrating to whisper, like, 20 people until someone finally answers the trade. So I'm looking forward to the auction house for that more than anything, I think. Yeah. Um, when it comes to like uniques and, uh, and um, rares that are like actually valuable, people will generally do the trades pretty quickly. And it's not that big of an issue having to go in and hop. Although I will say it is frustrating having to stop in the middle of your map to go and trade as well. Um, mm -hmm. especially when you're doing maps that are worth a lot of currency and you could be making more currency by just doing the map than by doing the trade, this will change the dynamic there. Um, so that'll be fun too, I think. Yeah. It interrupts the flow. I mean, especially if you have a headhunter, mm -hmm. which I know like it's a rich person problem, but it does interrupt the flow yeah. <laughs> of the, the gameplay, which like when you're playing Path of Exile or when, when I'm playing a game, I want to be having fun playing the game. So not... not you're not going to miss those interactions with uh, some rando trading in hideouts. You know, it could have a funny name, like the one that Snake used for uh, his video. <laughs> for his video. Name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... It, it does happen. And right? like, that that is a thing. But you can also, I think the focus should have been, when it comes to getting those interactions, should have been on making party play more fun for everybody. Um, if they could make party play a thing with a stranger, more of a thing that people actually are incentivized to do, yeah. Uh, then you'll get those interactions that you otherwise like now you get through trade but like come on it's trade yeah yeah party play <laughs> I, it's impossible in poe one i mean it's what it's do you think so about bad. those ideas on uh bro ss bro ssf i haven't i haven't watched it but i um i like the concept i know I've, i have a group of friends that i've been playing poe with since i started playing and Occasionally, we do do like an SSF style thing where it's just trading amongst ourselves, but it never very lasts very long. So uh, we get to like maps, and then we're like, okay, maybe we should just start trading again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's a cool concept. Yeah, it's hard to commit to. Yeah, yeah. that's one of the reasons I, I like PoE because you can just hop in and play. Like I know Snake, you have a kid too. Yeah, I like PoE because it's pseudo single player. I can do yeah. everything I want to do at my own leisure. There's no, oh, well, you have to fight this world boss at 10 o'clock PM. And then this event pops up at 1030. No, I can hop in, do whatever, whatever the hell I want. And the only time I interact with people is when I'm trading. It's very mm -hmm. nice. Thank you, PoE. Thank you. Don't change. Yeah, I like that yeah. I can just step up and walk away when something comes yeah. up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. I just want to clarify. One map, one map I, I'm not trying to say that you 
need to make party play the main thing <laughs> in Path of Exile. Okay, just to be clear here, I also play single player like 95, actually, yeah. you know what, 99% of the time, okay? <laughs> but like, um, that's not what I'm trying to say. But I think that if yeah. they, their goal is to get interaction, you should make party play more fun. Yeah. So what you're saying is we need an open world with at least 10 world bosses on a tight rotation. No, absolutely no, no, not. It's not a tight rotation. It's like every six hours. So every that if you're hours. not on okay. so you in need... that one span, you always yep. miss it. So you need to be on at 10 p.m. or 4 a.m. Right. Yeah. Right. So, okay. Got it. Thanks, Swingy. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for elaborating on that point. Sorry. <laughs> I just wish they would build out the, if they would build out the guild system a little bit more. Because hmm. uh, right now I think guilds, you it's just like trade. That's all you really are doing. Is you got a hideout. You got a hideout. You got a together. guild hideout. Chill together. If, you, if they could add some sort of rewards or something that give you like using your guild, doing something. Not, I'm not talking item rewards. I'm not even talking currency. Oh, okay. I'm just talking about something like even if it's experience or like mm. some way that if you're interacting with your guild, you're socializing with each other. Maybe I agree with you. Unlock some cosmetics for your hideout or something like that. that yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan that. of that. Yeah. Challenges. Throw it into the challenges. Like yeah, your guild yeah, needs yeah. to complete this many of something. No, don't do that. Don't make me work <laughs> like people for my challenges. Challenge uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Achievements. Steam achievements. There you go. Yeah. People yeah. will be all in for that for a little bit. That's yeah. actually like something that World of Warcraft did and it was super popular. They oh, put yeah. achievements into their guild system and oh, yeah? it made guilds like a lot more popular to just for casual players to go yeah. in and create with their friends because they would then get mm -hmm. those achievements. They would get uh, like you get gold towards your guild bank, you get experience points for a certain amount of hours or something like that. Um, just like small rewards, cosmetic too. Um, and it kind of incentivized playing together even as a casual. Was that a recent ad? Bec was there like a no. lull? In go no, it was a long time ago. Okay. Yeah, back in Cataclysm, I think. Cataclysm? Okay, got it. Okay. That's a long time ago. I never was played like WoW. 20 years but... ago, right? I mean, yeah. Geez. 20 years. <laughs> That's wild. Jeez. The game did come out 20 years ago. Yeah, I know. That's nuts. Gosh. Have all of you played WoW? Am I the only person who hasn't played it? Oh, you haven't Snake. No, I've only played the free trials and everything. No, uh, my first Blizzard game was D4. Wow. So, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I feel um, thankful that I don't have all of the disappointment that I hear from everyone else whenever mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. reminisce on Blizzard of old. D 4s story was decent playing through the campaign. Yeah, I enjoyed myself. It was, uh, it was good. I liked it a lot, um, except for the fact that I was playing a barbarian at launch, which was the worst. Was it class bad? It was really to, bad. It was it fine. Was terrible. No, no, the Druid really, was the worst. Were you playing? No, don't Hoda, even get me though? started. Were you playing Hoda? I started Whirlwind. It, okay, I was doing Whirlwind and I was doing Rend, I believe. And Rend is yeah, yeah. Rend they is, were terrible. Rend <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> The problem with uh, D4, vanilla at least, um, and I think even now still, is the Barbarian, you have you have to run all three shouts, and then the ultimate that gives you more of the shouts. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not effective, and then once you do that, you just one-shot everything. There's no middle ground. It's just, yeah. That was my experience back then, too. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I was pretty pleased with the game until the final boss fight. I was disappointed with the Lilith fight, the Lilith fight yeah. in the campaign. So, yeah, so so here, I'll compare the two again. I'm shocked mm -hmm. that there were no voice lines at all during the boss battles in D4. I feel like Blizzard did so well with the cinematic elements of their games, but then in boss battles, they kind of let it go. Like, not special music, they don't have voice line cues, they don't have the boss interacting with you. I just feel like that adds a lot to the battles. When the boss mm -hmm. is talking to your character, even if your character is silent, I don't really care, whatever. But yeah, it was just silent. And it was just me beating on Lilith for like five minutes. I don't I was remember that, but it's possible. I, I like didn't take note of it at all. Oh, so. you didn't? Oh, yeah. okay. No. Oh. Yeah, I didn't notice. Yeah. No, because no, like the Astaroth fight, there's a lot of banter, but Astaroth, that's a really cool fight. Lilith, yeah. I like the Astaroth fight. Um, I liked most of the fights. Duriel, too. Duriel ch chatters that was the, and that Dariel, was the, too. And our, yeah, I liked most of the fights, but there's the pinnacle, like the last fight. Yeah. I would have thought because they built up Lilith from the very first uh, cinematic trailer, which was just badass, that a lot of work would have gone into the final boss fight. And I just right. didn't feel, I didn't feel that, which was sad. Everything else was, I, I enjoyed, I really did. The cinematics in that game are oh, amazing. Incredible. Yep. Amazing. And now that I, like PoE2 is actually, 
it's on my list of features for my next video. I, I already had it recorded and everything for this one, but I was like, nah, I'll just cut it and move for the next video. If POE2 comes out and they actually do put cinematics in. Interesting. It's just another smack in the face of Blizzard. Like, yeah, we're well, better than you. <laughs> well, here's a comment that was recently made by one of uh, POE2's senior devs. Essentially, GGG focuses on gameplay first and right. cinematic second. He said uh, to the people interviewing him, I encourage you to go look up how much one second of the average Blizzard cinematic costs. It's, it's like yeah. $60,000 or something like that, right? For one second on average. Ooh. Now their cinematic, you know, the by th three they come was like nine minutes. So it's a lot of money. So they just don't spend the money on that. And they try to make do what they have with like the in-game cinematics yeah. and everything. So I don't know. It would be really cool if they had a launch cinematic. I totally agree. I think that would get a lot of people to look at the game because people are vain and they really like that sort of cinema and everything. Yep. But it, I, I don't know if it's going to happen. I think they're just think putting it all just, into the game. Even just like some sections in POE 1, if it was like you go to the, right. like the Solaris Temple and the... Mm -hmm. Lunar Temple, I don't know. Lunaris, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it. you go in there, and once you finish that, having some sort of like, mm -hmm. okay, everything's changing a little bit right now. Like mm -hmm. the world gets dark when you go to the Val, the Val the area right. in the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Having yeah. some sort of just like five seconds in game, even of like, oh, this is shifting, just uh, sets the context, and then you move forward. I love the concept art cinematics that Blizz they're doing for the season trailers. I feel like yeah. those are probably lower cost. I'd love something like that for Poe, like comic yeah. book style. That'd be so cool. Yeah, just anything that would set context. Because right mm -hmm. now in like POE, like unless you're reading everything, you got to read everything. Yeah. And you Kata, guys read like it all. Kata, I'm still like, I don't even know. I, I need to go back and actually just watch a full like someone talking about the story of POE one and the lore so I can understand what's going on. I have that. Maybe Channel. maybe not you. Maybe I'll go to Kit and Cat. <laughs> yeah, she has the she has the full thing. She sounds better too. She does the full recap. <laughs> Yeah, I've been playing for 11 years and I have never read all of them like really at all. Yeah, but here I am. <laughs> I'm, I've been playing last epoch the past two weeks and I'm actually taking the time to read everything and listen. To are everything. you? You are? I am. That's yeah, so cool. It. I'm enjoying Good job. Yeah. Nice. I can't stand how slow the text crawls in last epoch. Very slow. Oh, yeah. One of my biggest things for them for the for the like story element is when you talk to people and when you like pick up notes on the ground and stuff. I really want them to keep talking to you as you're moving yeah. Yeah. because yeah. it stops. Like if you move away too far away from the note or whatever, it'll just stop talking to you, stop right. reading it to you. Yeah. So, cause I don't, I don't want to stop and listen to the whole thing. <laughs> you can but, be reading the note and then a monster comes and attacks you while you're listening uh -huh. to it. And then you have to like click away to deal with the monster. And it's like, okay, time to restart the note. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, Last epoch story though. Are you, are you like enjoying it? I am. Um, it's got the whole time travel thing going on, which uh, the first couple times that I played it, I didn't really pay attention to what was going on or who any of the characters were. This time I'm actually like keeping track of who the characters are, and you do actually see them across time, uh, mm -hmm. some of them. Uh, so that's been mm -hmm. fun to, to see. And in the notes, you'll actually learn about characters that you had known previously and like what happened to them in the future just by reading notes and stuff. So there's like kinds of little uh, context about what's going on in the the world i guess and uh it's it's interesting it's not like amazing but it, it works yeah i think i'm they too got... casual to read <laughs> too that's casual simple. to read that's a tagline <laughs> i think they did so much better with the new like starting experience because they actually had you meet like a lot of the characters that mm -hmm. become like your story like why do you have the epoch at all why is why why do you have it like who are you helping Wh yeah. who is the sage that brings you to the council chambers who is yeah. is it it's not it's getting mixed up in characters uh the the heaboran barbarian grail. guy grail. grail i was gonna call him Groose, yeah, grail. but i know that's Wee. <laughs> but he, grail he is actually a character now and you go and see him throughout the ages like you said and when they changed that in the beginning i think that was such a huge thing because mm -hmm. beforehand you just kind of jumped into it. You were like, you really? found yeah. some random caravan that had been uh, like ransacked and you, somebody had just not died yet. 
and they <laughs> had the epoch for you and said, here, have this. <laughs> no you way. have to save the world. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a little bit more to it, but like, yeah, you, you get the epoch oh, after just crazy. running into a ransack caravan and then you go off and you end up having to sort of, you know, like immediately it, it jumped you forward in time to like the ed- the edge of time, whatever it's, I can't remember the exact name. Yeah, the the, it jumps you all the way forward the to the time. end of time. That's and you're an amazing hub. void monsters. That's that a, hub that's is a so reference cool. to Chrono Trigger. I love it. It is? I've never played that. I've heard mm-hmm. it's very good though. Yeah, no, it's all about time travel that game. Yeah. And so there's mm-hmm. a, a location called the end of time. And oh, okay. that's what this place is. This uh, location is referencing. Yeah. Super it's cool. cool. Yeah. But Jack, you're right. I, I remember I played it before that change and then I saw try your video or I think yeah. you showed off a little bit of the beginning yeah. and talked about it. It's and I was like, Oh, different. this is different. Let me go oh. back and play it and let's see what, it, how it's different. Yeah. And yeah. It's, you actually like make sense now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's yeah. cool. I'm glad they did that in time for launch. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. They did it in time. Yeah. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what else have you guys been playing? Power world? Yep. Yep. Of course. <laughs> All of us. Mm-hmm. Oh gosh, Snake, I'll just, I'll just, I'll start off with, I played it for 30 minutes and I refunded it. I know I don't have the time to play it. I did the same. I'd thing. rather, I'd rather go play the Ark Inquisitor with my little bit of time that I yeah, have. Let's do it. Yeah. I did the same thing as you snake. And then I showed it to my <laughs> wife and she said, oh my goodness, I need to play this. So we now play it together. I bought it again. It's very fun <laughs> play with your partner. Yeah. That's what I've been doing too. Uh, I showed it to my <laughs> girlfriend. I was like, "Hey, this game came out. Everybody's playing." Uh, but we've also already played a lot of crafting games together: V Rising, Valheim, Conan Exiles. Like we've been playing these kinds of games. No, I haven't played Satisfactory actually. Gosh, I burned like 450 hours into Satisfactory in like two or three months. Wow! Whoa! <laughs> While wow. I was also working like 65 hour weeks at Ooh. my job. Yeah. Multitasking. Yeah. Very nice. I. Yeah, my friends, uh, we were, that was like when Among Us came out. So we were playing Among okay. Us, and I would alt tab over and play Satisfactory while I was dead. <laughs> so my friend saw I installed it the other day, and he was like, man, I think we need to have an intervention. <laughs> yeah, I've, been Jack, playing, playing Power World? I, I've been playing Power World. I've been also playing Enshrouded, because uh, they both okay. came out pretty much the same week or like the yep. week after each yep. other. Both of them are very good, but Power World is just so much happier. So it's a lot easier. <laughs> it's a lot easier to like play and like not care and like play with your friends. Uh, and Shrouded is like a lot more of an RPG. It's got a story to it. It's yeah. uh, a little bit more dark, and you know, there's like a sense of urgency. So, um, still great games, both of them. But Power World is just. I mean, it's. I haven't seen all the pal. I haven't seen. There's like a, a way you can like combine pal together. The, um, the breeding. Breeding farm, I think it's called. I forget. Yeah, yeah, breeding farm. And so, you know, I don't know if I'll get in trouble by saying they're pal, but uh, <laughs> but they're like, here, yeah. yeah, I think right, it's I'll like just such edit a great say the word. Just, Jack, can you just say the word pal for me? Just very cleanly, <laughs> and then I'll just edit that on there. Okay. <clears throat> pal. Is that good? <laughs> great. Is that ASMR? Pal. Oh, perfect. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, is this the uh, AT Jack uh, ASMR stream now? I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah. When is that series going up? And apparently, it's already happened, man. You don't know how many comments I get telling me that so oh, your voice, yes. your voice is amazing. I'm like, you know, if you had been around when I was a child, when I got bullied, oh. no I'm kidding, it's not a sob story. Definitely not a sob story. <laughs> but no, it's like super awesome to hear that people uh, kind of like see that that way, because then at least I know that I don't have to worry about the way I sound. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, I have got to get running, so. This has been an absolute blast. I can't yeah. wait for us to do this again. I think a little bit after the last Epoch launch, we'll all get back together and we'll talk how that's going. And I'm sure by then we'll have some more news on Path of Exile 2. And yeah. maybe we'll actually get some news on the next league by then too. Probably. Possibly. So it was like December December 9th was the launch of Affliction. So December 18th. Three months. Was it December yeah. 9th? I, I came right back from vacation and it was like the next day. So oh I'm pretty sure gosh. it was the ninth. Yeah. So it'll be like March 9th, March 10th, something. Yeah, oh, nice. yeah. Somewhere in there. Wow. Cool. So, well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. This has been the first episode of Beyond the Atlas. I'm Ice Cold Snake. See you next time. Bye. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs>